everyone, Scott Woods here from Hawkridge Systems, and today I'm going to tell you a fun story about a traveling piece of driftwood. Uh, I know that sounds kind of funny. Here's the here's the culprit right here, and um, what uh, um, what the background for this story is is that uh, my wife and I were walking down the beach. She spots this piece of driftwood and says, "You know what? That would make a really good plant. It has a really cool like hole in it where we could put some plants and whatnot." And uh, I know this particular beach, you're not supposed to take the driftwood. So I said, well, if I could 3D print it for you, would that be good enough? And she says, absolutely. So I take some pictures of it on the beach. I send it to my good buddy, Matt, down in, down in Portland. Uh, by the way, I'm from Seattle. And I said, hey, if, you, if I send this to you can, you, can you scan it and send it back? And he says, yeah, no problem. So I sneak it off the beach. I package it up, send it down to Portland. He 3D scans it, sends it back to me, and I 3D print it. Um, and we'll get to that at the end of the video. Uh, but here is Matt's part of the 3D scanning. Hi everyone, Matthew here. So I got that piece of wood that Scott Wood sent me, and I'm going to get started digitizing it. The scanner I'm going to be using is the Arctic Space Fighter, which captures extremely high level resolution, as well as color at the same time. You're going to see that it's going to be pretty quick to be able to capture that data, and then from there it's going to be a very simple cleanup process of getting our data aligned, and then we're going to run a couple algorithms to actually create our final mesh. Once I have that final mesh, I'm going to export it out and send it over to Scott so he can get started on the print. But I'm going to take it a step further and edit that mesh up by reducing its polygon count, adding color to it, and then also bringing it into another software so I can add some mounting holes onto this part. I thought this was a really unique looking part. It has this kind of cool back end of it. So it kind of reminded me of those medieval torches that they would hang on the wall. So I was hoping that we can make a version of this that we can actually mount onto a wall. You'll be see it's also a pretty simple process to do that. You can see that we can also make some pretty realistic renders once we add that color on. So without further ado, let's get started. Since the Space Spider is a structured light scanner, we don't need any targets on the wood. We can just place it onto our turntable and start scanning. All I have to do is turn this part using the turntable or the scanner itself. This allows me to easily capture all the nooks and crannies and edges of this driftwood without needing to reposition it several times just to get one side of it. Once I feel like I have enough data in one position, I'm going to stop that scan and flip over the part, so that way I can scan the bottom. Again, all I have to do is keep rotating the table or the scanner to gather all the necessary data. I'm not too concerned about getting all the smaller holes within a single scan either, since I'm going to be capturing this in three different positions. When I align the scans together, you'll see that I've captured these smaller holes at all the necessary angles between these different scans. My third scan will be the piece on its side, allowing me to have a nice bridge between the top and bottom half. I prefer to do this on most of my parts that I need to flip over, even if I have enough data in both scans to align, since it helps me fill in those missing bits of data that might be between the top and bottom sides, kind of those edges. Finally, since this larger hole at the top is such a unique feature, I want to make a fourth scan focusing just on it. Here's where I can really show off the uniqueness of the scanner. I can hold the part up and rotate it while also rotating the scanner at the same time, allowing me to capture really deep into that hole without needing to do several positions. This is possible because the scanner is tracking based off of geometry and color, something that a target-based or even a laser scanner would never be able to do. With all four scans done, I can start erasing the table from the data. This can be done in the editor using the cutoff plane selection, or I could have removed the base during the scanning process using the automatic base removal in the scan tab. After that, I can go into the align tab to match different points of each scan together, giving the scan an initial and then a best fit alignment. Auto alignment likely will work on this, but I wanna show off how quickly we can align them manually. I don't need to choose exact points. As you can see, I'm kind of choosing three points of the scan that are roughly matching, and the software does the rest to best fit. In our list, it looks like we've captured just about 2,000 frames, or individual photos. Global Registration shuffles all of these together, giving us an even better alignment between the different data. Next will be our outlier removal, getting rid of all these dust modes and bits of outlier data from the scans. Finally, the sharp fusion process will generate the mesh and preserve those sharp edges from the wood. I'm also choosing the mesh to be watertight, meaning that I don't want any holes in our final output mesh. Our total time to get to this point took about 7 minutes of scanning, 
four minutes of manual data manipulation, and then finally letting the processes run for about 35 minutes. So in just about 45 minutes, we've gone from nothing to a complete mesh that we can now send off. Now we can apply our color to the mesh. This is done within the texturing tab, and it's just as simple as the rest of the tools. I can choose the mesh that I want to color and what scans I want to pull my color data from. I can then choose the resolution of my color map and if I want to impaint in some missing data. I can also remove any glare if I suspect that there might be some, but I think there won't be any on this piece of wood. Once I'm ready, I can start the process, which will give me a color preview that I can adjust further before confirming everything. Now we're ready to export out this color mesh out as an OBJ and bring it into our rendering software. I prefer to use Visualize to verify how everything looks since it's so easy to import in that mesh into here and quickly apply some lighting changes. With just the colors from the scanner, I think this is looking pretty good, and I'm happy on how the colors are coming out with some sunlight onto it. I think at this point we're ready to go and move on to our next steps. The last thing I'd like to do with this mesh is make a version that has some mounting holes on the back. Now, if you've ever worked with mesh data, you know that it's pretty hard to edit it since it's not a solid body. The software I prefer to use is Geomagic Freeform, since it converts mesh data into a clay-like body using voxel information. I can then sculpt features onto this mesh, or cleanly remove sections of it using planes or other kind of inserted primitives. From here, I can create a plane to cut away a section of the wood to give me a flat face to work off of. Now, I can just add in some mounting hole features by combining some simple primitives and placing it in the desired location on the back. Using a boolean command, I can remove these from the main mesh, and due to this being a voxel body, everything smoothly combines together, leaving me no infolded sections. From here, I can add finishing touches to the mesh and re-export it as an STL for printing. All right, well, we got the scan all done. I'm gonna package this back up and send it over to Scott again so we can put it back on the beach. All right, so Matt sent me back that 3D scan and it was perfect for what I needed. I was able to print a perfect little replica of that piece of driftwood uh, and it's even better, right? Because it has that flat bottom. You can go ahead and set that on a table or it has the keyholes in the back I can put on a wall and I put some air plants in there or something like that. Just a really nice, nice little little product we have here now. So uh, thank you very much, Matt. And now I get to go return the original back to the beach. All right, so I've returned the contraband back to the beach. I'm going to give it to my son to find it a good home.